From the Oakland Hills to Jack London Square, the Port of Oakland to the Coliseum, KTVU presents Talk of the Town, an engaging conversation about the people and issues important to Oakland. Hello, I'm Dave Clark. Welcome to Talk of the Town. It is one of my great pleasure to be with one of my favorite people. He's my brother. He's a mentor. He's a hero. He's a great actor, Delroy Lindo. Movies, television, animation, all kinds of things. And he's an Oakland man, too. He lives here in Oakland. First of all, Delroy, I'm, Delroy, I'm really happy that you're here. It's an honor to have you here. Thanks for having me, bro. Thank you. So you live in Oakland. I do. People see you around town and they say, that's Delroy Lindo. I saw him in this. I saw him in that. H how long have you been in Oakland? And why do you call it home? Uh, we moved here in 1996, and I call Oakland home because it is geographically close enough to Los Angeles, so that if I do need to go down there, it's you know less than an hour. Um, it felt right because I lived in New York for many years in mm -hmm. New York City. Yeah and still have a place on the East Coast. Um, in the winters in New York, the winters of 1995 and 1996 were particularly harsh. We had multiple uh, snowstorms. Yeah. And I was, I was New York out. Um, I'd gone to school here in San Francisco. I went to school at the American Conservatory Theater. We had friends in the area. And so this felt like this Oakland, the Bay Area, felt like a good compromise um, and that's that's how we ended up moving moving here and it's um as I said it's it's close enough to Los Angeles if I need to get to mm -hmm. Los Angeles and we 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 felt um, rather than moving to Los Angeles mm -hmm. uh, this was a good compromise to be in the Bay Area was a good compromise for us yeah, it's so unusual talking to you in this setting because I used, I'm used to talking to you, being around you in, in a relaxed setting, and this is a relaxed setting. But talk about your family, if, you know, within reason. Um, I love them, but I can talk about them, but talk about your family. Well, it's interesting because you, you, you have a history with Nashime having yeah. gone to uh, uh, elementary school. Elementary right? school. In Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, we have a son. Uh, Deniri, uh, who is just turned 21. Um, He's going to be in the NBA, too. I'm just going to predict. Fair enough. He's a great basketball player. <laughs> He's a wonderful, He's a very talented basketball yeah. player. Yeah. Um, and, and it's interesting that you talk about um, um, our being in this setting. Yeah, yeah. Um, because we, we uh, our communications generally are informal, quote unquote, as, yeah. as friends yeah. and, and yeah. your wife. Lucretia is also a very dear friend of um, mine, but yeah, of Nashi, yeah. you guys go 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 way back. Yeah, and so this is um, this is a little different, but it's yeah. but it's but it's but it's okay. It's all right. Anything to help help you out, man. Well, I'm just so glad that you're here. Let's let's talk about you, your career. Do you prefer movies or TV or being a voice in animation? What do you prefer? Um, I started in the theater. Um, yeah. I started as a New York theater actor, and in my, at my core, I'm still that. I'm still um, a theater actor. Um, a lot of the practices that I developed as a theater actor, mm -hmm. I still use in my work for uh, the camera, whether it be television or film. Um, certain kind of, it's it's a certain kind of ethos a certain kind of way of approaching the work um that i developed as a theater actor and um so is it the whole thing you like there's no safety net you're just out there um there is that but i'm, I'm speaking more specifically about um warm-ups i'm speaking about when mm -hmm. i when i was working in the theater i would always do uh, a physical and a vocal warm up hmm. before I went on stage. Yeah. Um, I still do that. Now, because the demands of working for the camera are different 
than the demands of working in the theater. Interesting. The warm-up is, is differently. I've modified it to, to um, because one does not generally have to use as much vocal projection in working for the camera. Right. But um, the exercises that I've developed mm -hmm. over the years working in the theater, I still use working for camera working for the camera. Now to your question, which do I prefer? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's interesting. So the, you mentioned um, television, movies, or animation. I would say to you, and I would include, I would still continue to include the theater. The theater. So they, they each have their, they each have their attractions for me, and I'll tell you what they are. Mm -hmm. In the theater, there is nothing that matches, that beats the communication that one has doing live theater with the audience. Hmm. And when you're, when you're doing a really wonderful piece of theater, and I've been fortunate in as much as I've done some terrific pieces of theater yeah. over the years, even though I have not been on stage at this point, I haven't been on stage since 2010. Um, but during the time when the theater was, working in the theater was really my bread and butter yeah. working in New York, there's nothing that beats the communication that happens between the actors on stage and the audience. And that relationship fuses together hmm. from the standpoint of the actors on stage doing the work and the audience enjoying, reacting, responding mm -hmm. to the work, right? Yeah. And that's a really special relationship that it's mutually, it, it, we feed each other. Yeah, yeah. And that's a really special um, dynamic. The aspect of working in the theater without, as you call it, a safety net yeah. is also a really, really good training for any actor. Mm -hmm because it's you, your fellow actors, the material, and the audience. Mm -hmm. There are no do-overs. No. You make a mistake, you've got to figure out a way, at, for instance, when I say a mistake, if you forget a line, yeah, call right. it, if you go up on your line, yeah. right? Uh, you gotta figure out a way of staying in character. And get back. And get back into yeah. the narrative, yeah. right? And there's, that's a really good training for, for any actor, I mm -hmm. think. So there is, Working in the theater, there, there is that special relationship between the actors and the audience, sharing the material, sharing the play, sharing whatever it is that one is working on. Yeah. That is very special and particular. As far as, I'll talk about animation. I haven't done a lot of animation. Okay. But you know, I did up. Yep. Um, Big uh, hit. Huge. <laughs> huge. Yeah, Pixar. The first. Uh, but I'm, I'll never forget, many, many years ago, I did an episode of The Simpsons. Mm. And it was at a period, it was during a period when The Simpsons was very, very popular. I, I'm not sure if The Simpsons is still on television. I think it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This was going back to mm, either the early 2000s or the late 1990s. It may have been the early mm -hmm. 2000s. And as a result of doing The Simpsons, I got instant cred <laughs> from my nieces and nephews of course. In, in Philly, right? Yeah. Oh my God, Uncle D, you did. And that's when I understood the power of that particular art form. Yeah. Years later, doing Up, and as you mentioned, that was a huge hit. <laughs> um, and it speaks to a lot of people. And so as an actor being involved in, in a project, in those kinds of projects, that is another way of connecting with audiences yeah, yeah. in a way that is, again, very particular and very, very valuable. Hey, Go ahead. Yeah, no, finish your thought. Um, television, working in television, um, I would say that now, let me talk about film mm -hmm. first, feature mm -hmm. films. The scope, the magnitude, the reach of yeah. film, particularly when one is in a film that has um, 
a large international mm -hmm. uh, following. I think I told you the, the last time you were at the house, I think I may have told you about um, being in Rome many, many years ago. I was in Rome in 1997. Mm. And Nashme and I were going, uh, we were about to go down the Spanish steps in Rome. You, yeah, great story. To, um, to uh, the shopping area. That's yeah. And these two Italian cats, and one of them looked at me and said, "They're little Italian." <laughs> this was 1997. Yeah, yeah. I said, "Hey, how are you? Good to see you." He didn't speak English. Didn't speak a word of English. But he knew, knew my your name. name. He mm -hmm. knew my name. Mm -hmm. That is the power and the reach and the majesty of film. I don't mm. even know what he had seen, <laughs> but he said my name. Delroy Lindo. Right. There is that power the mm -hmm. film has that I feel is a remarkable thing to be, in, to be a part of. Mm. Um, I love the process of working in film. Um, to the extent that what one is working on, hmm. there's the there's the immediate joy of doing the work, the day to day, the day to day, mm -hmm. the process of showing up on set, the process of preparing the eat the night before, mm -hmm. showing up on set the next morning, doing the work. That process yeah, yeah. is rich, for mm. me. and then you, there's the aspect of that work ultimately reaching audiences. That's special. Now, obviously, not all films, mm -hmm. but when they work, when, when films, mm -hmm. when the films that one has done have resonated for audiences, yeah. that's, a, that's a remarkable thing to be involved with, man. And, and the fact that the reach of film is so vast. Yeah. Yeah. Television, television, similar um, in, in terms of the reach yeah. of television and the fact that the television landscape has, seems to have exploded, exploded. in the last 10 years. Yeah. And the reach of television is, is vast. So I, I would say to you, while it, it's hard for me to answer what is your favorite because mm. they each have their no. own special qualities. Um, if I had to choose, I think I would toggle back between theater and feature films. Interesting, interesting. If, if I, but there's a but, and the but <laughs> is, the but is, Interesting work is interesting work. Yeah. Whether it is in the theater or in animation or in television or film. Interesting work is interesting work. And I, I always want to be about the business of doing interesting work. You always seem to. You know, one of the hardest things about sitting down to talk to Delroy Lindo mm. is trying to look at the landscape of all the things you've appeared in. I mean, whether it was The Five Bloods, which you should have won an Academy Awards for. Thank you. And you don't have to say a word, I'm saying it. Thank and you. everybody else thought you should have won an Academy Award Thank for you. that movie about the Vietnam War. Uh, the, the various movies you've done, the movies with John Travolta and any number of people, when you think about the people you've worked with over the years, is there one that stands out or, or is there a handful that stands out? There, I would say that there are a handful. Okay. Um, maybe two handfuls. Okay. Um, you mentioned the Five Bloods. And I've mentioned, uh, I've said over the years that all of the work that I've done with Spike will always hold a really special place in my yeah. heart. Mm -hmm. um, those projects... Now I've done four films with him. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm X, 
Crooklyn Clockers and recently the Five Bloods. The Five Bloods. And each of those projects are special in their own way. Mm -hmm. Not only in terms of the subject matters of the films, but also the process of working with Spike mm -hmm. is particular. Um, I have always cherished um, the trust that I feel Spike places in me yeah. as a worker, as a creative worker. And those projects are always very, very special. Um, will always hold a very special place in my heart. Yeah. Uh, God. Now, having said that, it's 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 hard to to pick. I'm thinking about. A, I did a film uh, some years ago. Um, uh, Soul the game. I played Satchel Paige. Yes. Special. Mm hmm. Special. Yeah. Um. Now that I am singling out some projects. I am going to forget some projects, and so what I'll say to you as a broad, yeah. as a broad um, uh, response to your question is that uh, there are a handful, maybe two handfuls of films that have meant something in particular to yeah. me. All of the films with Spike, Soul of the Game. But I, I'd also say, and this is for any young actors out there yeah. <clears throat> who may be watching this, and this may, this may sound kind of pious, but it's true. There are things to be learned from every single project that one does. And that's what I try to do, even when it's material that mm. I feel less connected to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for, and I'm approaching the work in such a way that, you know, what, what is there a value for me yeah. working in this particular project? And what that takeaway will what be. It, what, what are the takeaways for me? Mm -hmm. How am I being challenged? Uh, how do I challenge myself? And from, if, if I go into a project with that philosophy or with that point of view, Usually, I can find something yeah. of value in the project. That's interesting. The, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to wind now because I know you have things to do. Mm. But there are so many different directions I would want to talk to you about what it's like to raise a young man for you. Uh, you that'll have to be another segment. But I have to, or oh, your friendship with Danny Glover, another man who has Bay Area roots and, and there we can talk forever about that and if you should want to but I do want to make sure I want to focus on the good the many good things you do philanthropically here in Oakland in the Bay Area and I've seen it but well, you've been a part of it. well I, I've seen it the way you feed people you make sure people have something to eat in the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas. You literally go through the streets of Oakland, and stopping you've been, people. And you've been with me. I, I'm happily doing me. it with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah. you said so you've been doing it for decades. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually address all three things that you, yeah. you just mentioned. The feeding, uh, my son, how it is to be the parent of a of a, a young African yeah. American man child. Yeah. And and Danny. Um, so the feeding. Um, yeah, as soon as I started to make a little money, I started doing this in, in New York when I was living in New York City yeah. in the, uh, in the uh, 1980s. I started doing this. And, it was, and when I say this, what it is is uh, I would go to the store um, and I would purchase a bunch of food. Yeah. And I would uh, get, and I had a little, back then I had a little um, 1968, uh, VW Bug, <laughs> right? Yeah. A Beetle. Um, and I would load my car up and I would just take my car up and down. I started in Harlem. Yeah. Uh, and I w anybody who looked like they could use some yeah. food, yeah. Um, I would wind the window down and say, hey, I, you know, I've got this food here. Would you like some? Uh, and it started like that. And it started in the, in the early, uh, early to mid 1919. 19, 80s mm -hmm. um, and it's grown from there and I will I usually it was Thanksgiving and Christmas yeah um, 
I would say initially, David, was a way that I could give of myself and share some of the good fortune yeah. that I felt had been bestowed on me. Yeah. And honestly, it made me feel better about myself. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, to, 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 to share and to give in that manner. Yeah. It's grown over the years <laughs> to the point where now um, you've been with me, I don't know, you've been with me the last six, seven, eight, couple? nine years. Yeah. I'm more than a couple. Yeah. And it then becomes, and we have other families that, yeah. have, that have joined us. Yeah. Uh, and we convoy various uh, a convoy of cars. That it's we quite have. an operation. And we put we all have food in our cars. Yeah. And it 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 becomes not only a way of interacting, actively yeah. interacting with the community, but also it's the formation of a brotherhood. It is. Right. It is. You mentioned my son. I started taking my son with me when when he was probably five or six years old. Yeah. Uh, he and I would get in the car, and I would, I would, uh, if we saw somebody, I would um, uh, give him the food. Yeah. And he would get out of the car, mm -hmm. and he would, he would interact with yep. whomever it was. Uh, it was really, it was, and it is really important for me to have my son have a sense of how blessed we are. Yeah. And how important it is to share. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. of ourselves, yeah. of the blessings that we have. Hmm. Um, the fact that you've become such a uh, a cornerstone for me mm. of that experience. Yeah. And what I love, um, you are always extremely humble. And I will say on camera, <laughs> on camera, it's a joy for me to observe how people respond to you as a member of this community. Well, and that, that also becomes part of our dynamic working together yeah, yeah. as men and as black men. As black men. As black men, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, uh, in, in participating in the community, in this community, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you mentioned me as a father and, and what it's like to be the, the parent of, a, of an African-American man-child, particularly at this, yeah. in, this, in this day and age. Yeah. And to the extent that I started including my son in the food giveaways when he was five, six yeah. years old, yeah. it has to do with trying to set an example to him of what it means to be a responsible human being on the planet, what it means to be a responsible, civic-minded, a responsible member of a community. Yeah. And mm -hmm. while I will not necessarily say that that was a, well, it is conscious. It's, mm -hmm. it's a conscious choice that I make but I try to demonstrate those things in my actions, um, just in terms of how I carry myself. Mm -hmm. And you're a parent yourself, and yeah. you know yeah. that our kids are watching everything, everything that we do. Everything, everything. Our kids are watching everything that we do and don't do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it, it, it's important for me, and I make mistakes. If my son walked in, that room, in, the, in the room right now, <laughs> Um, you know, he would applaud his dad. He would, but he, he, we also yeah. um, the it, real, it, the real. Yeah, you know, keeping it one hundred. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, and um, it, for me, it's important for my son to know that I'm human. Part of being human involves making mistakes, mm -hmm. and it's important for me to um, communicate yeah. that to my son. But as as the parent of a of a man child, you know we have particular challenges mm -hmm. um, that some of those challenges are increasing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they've increased exponentially in the last I don't know, ten, twelve years. 
every time there's some any 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 tragedy um, and the fact that there are so many instances in which black people but black young black men black men mm -hmm. are murdered yeah that's always a a moment yeah. in our family it's always a thing mm -hmm. um, sometimes we discuss those things sometimes not yeah. but it is a dynamic that we all react and respond to and that is where the importance of community friendships a village yeah. a village yeah um, they're critical yeah yeah because we're all supporting our young people our young men and that is part of the uh, major challenge of being a parent certainly but also being the member of a community and let me hold your thought right there because I, I've used up my time I do want to talk them. about Danny though but go ahead but mention Danny Glover I will we, I need you to mention Danny Glover absolutely um, part of the reason that I'm sitting here on some level yeah is because of Danny Glover and this is what I mean by that Danny Glover demonstrated to me and continues to demonstrate yeah. to me what it means to turn celebrity and fame into active <laughs> community-based yeah. action. Yeah. Danny has always for me been a shining example of somebody who took his fame and his celebrity yeah. and utilized it for the good of others yeah yeah you know yeah and he taught me uh he taught me a lesson he he set a really good example um for me i mean danny and i are pretty much contemporary yeah right yeah yeah but you know danny had <clears throat> explosive yeah. commercial success yeah starting back in the i don't know the 80s right? yeah um, and I was still working in the theater. Yeah. And, still, and I, I, I've observed Danny Glover over the years yeah. continu continually uh, speak truth to power, put his money where his mouth is, yeah. and engage himself, connect himself, and engage himself with various causes and communities. Around the world. Around the world. Yeah. Yeah. Around the world. Yeah. And that for me was, <clears throat> is, and was an extraordinary example of how to use celeb celebrity. And I have, even though you know, I don't have the same magnitude of celebr celebrity that Danny has, but it was a really good example of how to use oneself for the good of others. You know, I learned from both you and Danny mm. in that regard, mm. seeing you both it inspires me and a number of other people. There's so much that I could sit and talk with Delroy Lindo about, but this has been such a pleasure. Likewise. Bro. Getting Thank a you. chance to sit down and talk to an incredible Hollywood artist, uh, actor, uh, television performer, any number of different titles who lives in Oakland. Uh, you, you, you're an inspiration. Well, you're my brother. Likewise, and I, I try not to gush, but you're very special to me and a part of my family. And Likewise, I love bro. you, I'm proud of you, Likewise. and I love your family. And it's just been a pleasure having you on Talk of the Town here at KTVU. Thank and you. I thank you, Delroy Lindo. Can I say one thing you in closing? Sure um, Everything you just said to me, I would say right back at you. Thank you. Right back at you. Because to the extent that I've observed um, somebody like Danny, um, I also observe you, the manner in which you have, um, oh, there are three or four events yeah. that I have been a part of you hosting. Yeah. Right. The organizations that you have um, um, connected yourself to yeah. and you take time out to host to MC yeah. certain events, fundraisers. And all of those things, man, um, for me, uh, are part of a continuum. Yeah. And that continuum has to do with 
how those of us who are blessed, blessed. to attain success, and that is not an easy thing no. to do, no. right? To 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 create to, to develop a career and then to maintain a career mm -hmm. over multiple years. Yeah. That's a job in and of itself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then to take that success and to use oneself in service of the community. And mm. that's what I've seen you do multiple years. Yeah. So, you know, for I say that just to say to the extent that you have a regard for me and respect yeah. me and a love for me, I would say right back at you because I've seen you do the exact same thing. Exactly. And we have these we have these diamonds in our community. Yeah. You know. Yeah. One of the um, advantages for me of living in a city like Oakland is that it enables me to keep my feet firmly placed yep. on the ground. Yeah. And yeah. to not, uh, it enables me to live a life with a semblance of normals, normals. Yeah. Yeah. And that was and is important for me, for Nashime, and for our son and the way that we want we wanted to raise our son. Yeah. You're a blessing to so many people okay. in so many different ways. I can get emotional talking about it, like but that. I mean it sincerely. I uh, it has been an absolute pleasure having you here on Talk of the Town. Delroy Lindo, I wish you <laughs> uber success, continued success. Thank you. And I hope I hope we get to do this again sometime. There, there are other things I want to ask you about. Absolutely. But thank you for being here. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. God bless. Thank you, man. Right. And for you, I'm Dave Clark. Thank you for being with us on Talk of the Town.